My name is Dr. Raj Dale. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. I work in the Division of Cardiology in the section of Electrophysiology. My clinical interests are in treating patients with cardiac arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation, supraventricular arrhythmias, and ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. In addition, I have a specialized interest in treating uh, patients and their families for conditions related to sudden cardiac death. These conditions may be either inherited or genetic ones uh, or acquired conditions. In addition, my research interests are focused on understanding the mechanisms of sudden cardiac death. Uh, specifically, I'm interested in identifying novel clinical risk factors and genetic factors that are associated with sudden cardiac death and sudden cardiac death risk prediction. Sudden cardiac death is death that occurs within one hour of the onset of symptoms. In other words, it is a spontaneous condition that occurs generally due to heartbeats that are either too fast or too slow and results in circulatory collapse. So sudden cardiac death is a spontaneous condition that results from irregular heart rhythms that are either too fast or too slow and result in a collapse of an individual. And as a result of the sudden onset of its nature, rapid resuscitation is required in order to prevent further clinical deterioration. Sudden cardiac death is a relatively rare condition in the population. Uh, it affects approximately one out of every 1,000 individuals. People who have a history of cardiovascular disease, either coronary heart disease or heart failure, are at an increased risk for sudden cardiac death events compared to the general population. And this increased risk applies to both men and women. Women with coronary artery disease are an understudied population. We do appreciate that most sudden cardiac death events occur in men. We also appreciate that men are more likely to have a history or evidence of coronary disease at the time of a sudden cardiac death event compared to women. But given the increased prevalence of coronary artery disease in our population among both men and women, the overall effect and the overall incidence of sudden cardiac death in women with coronary artery disease has not been studied as, as extensively. Our objectives in the current study were first to quantify the risk of sudden cardiac death in postmenopausal women with coronary artery disease. In addition, we were interested in identifying clinical risk factors that were independently associated with sudden cardiac death events in this group of women. And finally, we were interested in evaluating whether these clinical risk factors would identify or would they predict women at the highest risk for sudden cardiac death events. So first, sudden cardiac death was not an uncommon condition of death in this group of women. Specifically, over a quarter of all deaths in this group in this group of postmenopausal women were attributable to sudden cardiac death events. In addition, sudden cardiac death comprised the majority of cardiovascular related deaths in this group of women. With those initial findings, we recognized that most of the women in this study would not have been flagged or identified as being high risk using our current methods of risk stratification. Specifically, most of these women had relatively preserved pumping function of the heart or what we refer to as the ejection fraction. As a result, they would not have been identified as being high risk. So we recognize that there is a limitation in our current methods of identifying high risk individuals. So we then evaluated clinical risk factors that were associated with sudden cardiac death events. And as I mentioned earlier, evaluated whether these risk factors would identify and predict sudden cardiac death events in this group of women. We found that a history of a myocardial infarction, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, 
kidney dysfunction, diabetes, and physical inactivity were each independently associated with sudden cardiac death. In addition, these six clinical risk factors appeared to predict sudden cardiac death events better than our current method of risk stratification, which is the left ventricular ejection fraction or the pumping function, a, a number or a quantity that we obtain using an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. We appreciate as clinicians that women with coronary artery disease, an understudied population in our uh, field of research, is at a reasonably high risk of sudden cardiac death, especially when they have clinical risk factors. In addition, our work suggests that these findings, that the identification of these risk factors need to be um, validated in other cohorts of women so that perhaps one day we derive and are able to implement a novel risk score for the identification of high-risk women for sudden cardiac death events. I collaborated on this research project with investigators from the University of California, San Francisco.